In the previous video, we focused on the double replacement reactions, the precipitation and the acid-base reactions. In this video, I want to look at the redox reactions. And I want to start with combustion. Now in the text, they don't treat combustion as its own category of reaction. They show combustion as a single replacement reaction or as a combination reaction. Because in the text, they're taking a broader view of combustion. They're saying that combustion is simply burning something in oxygen. I want to focus on a very special case of combustion. I want to talk about burning a hydrocarbon in oxygen. As the name hydrocarbon may suggest, you're looking at a compound that contains hydrogen and carbon. So when we light a Bunsen burner in the lab, we are burning methane gas, which is a hydrocarbon. And if you burn a hydrocarbon in sufficient oxygen, you produce carbon dioxide and water. And we've looked at some of these reactions already. The example I just gave you is burning methane in oxygen. So this is the fuel for the Bunsen burner. CH4 plus O2 makes CO2 and H2O. And to balance it, we need two oxygens and two waters. Combustion reactions are nice because you get the same products every time. The combustion reactions can get a little bit yucky when you have to balance them. In the text, one of the examples they gave for balancing a reaction was this ethane combustion, where you have C2H6 plus O2 making CO2 and H2O. And to balance it, you ended up getting a 2746. This was one of the examples where you could balance it using a fraction, where if you said 1, 3 and a half, 2, and 3, you balanced a reaction and then cleared the reaction by doubling everything. So again, the book doesn't treat this as its own category. But when I talk about combustion, I really want to focus on the burning of these hydrocarbons and oxygen. The book does talk about combination reactions or synthesis reactions. And as the name suggests, you're just going to be combining things to make something bigger. Generically, you can take two elements or two small compounds and bring them together to make one larger compound. On the image to the left, we have a picture of burning magnesium. When you react magnesium with oxygen, you get magnesium oxide. This was the example that we used in balancing an equation. This is a synthesis or a combination reaction where you're taking two elements to make a more complicated compound. The book goes and calls this a combustion reaction, which is technically correct. You're burning something in oxygen. But again, when I say combustion, I really want to focus on using a hydrocarbon, which this is not. If you can build things up, you can also break things down. So the opposite of a synthesis reaction is a decomposition reaction, where you're taking a compound of two or more elements and breaking them into smaller, simpler pieces. This image to the left is showing the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. When hydrogen peroxide decomposes, it forms water and oxygen gas. And so that image with the flame is showing the presence of oxygen gas. But more importantly, you can see that you have a more complicated molecule breaking down into smaller pieces. Perhaps the most complicated form of a redox reaction is single replacement. We've looked at some of these already as well. A single replacement is an example where you have a lone element that comes in and replaces one of the elements in a compound. In a double replacement reaction, I talked about two couples at a dance and swapping partners. Single replacement reaction is more like one of my high school dance experiences, where I came with my date and somebody was sitting off on the side, and by the end of the night, my date was dancing with that person and I was standing off on the side. Here's a real classic example. When you take magnesium and place it in hydrochloric acid, well, the magnesium is the lone element standing off on the side, and hydrochloric acid is a combination of the hydrogen ion and the chloride ion. Well, now we have to think, what's magnesium going to react with? Is magnesium going to bond with the positive hydrogen ion or the negative chloride ion? Well, magnesium is a metal, so it likes to form positive charges, and so the magnesium comes and binds to the negative chloride and then just releases the hydrogen gas as the loner at the end.